Hello everyone, good to having you back. This is Soren, your chess teacher, and today I want to present to you boys and girls the oldest ever recorded game of chess. Now, when I'm saying the oldest ever recorded, I'm talking about the modern chess, so the chess that we're actually playing today. Okay, not the oldest in the history because I'm pretty sure they were playing from millennia in India, something called the Chaturanga, I think. And uh, I'm not talking about that form of pre-chess, I'm talking about the modern chess, like they were applying the rules we're playing today. Okay, so now we got to go to the medieval Spain, uh, to 1475 to being more accurate, and the protagonists were two um, characters, two socio-political characters in the medieval Spain, and uh, let me introduce you to those two figures and to their game. Okay, now we're talking about White here, which is a person, a poet, a, 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 a politician named, pardon my Spanish, uh, Francisco de Castelve, and the other guy, the other person, Narciso Vignoles, okay? Um, I'm not sure if that's the correct Spanish pronunciation, but hey, there you go. Right, so now let's just go proceed and see this beautiful game that they played in the 15th century. Uh, King Dan was uh, Ferdinand II of Aragon. So, okay. Right, so that was mentioned too. Let's go with the first move they played. E4, right. Perfect, the most popular king pawn. Awesome. D5, Scandinavian. Right, so we take on d5, white took on d5, black took back with the queen, and now it's time for white to win a bit of tempo by playing knight c3. What does that mean, boys and girls? It means that the knight has been developed from the back row, it's something that we need to do, and we attack the queen. Now, the black queen needs to go to safety, and when they do that, we actually gain one more move to play, and that is called in chess uh, winning a tempo. Therefore, you get another piece in the game, activating more of your arsenal. So, the black queen goes back on d8. In the modern chess now, the queen also may go to a5. There is a line as well. But now, I mean, in the 15th century, you know, they just chose to play queen to d8. Now, Francisco continued with the bishop on c4. All right, uh, developing, attacking on f7 for the time being, and looks good. Nothing terribly wrong. Knight f6, game continued with knight f3. Let me just disable those arrows and things. I don't want to see them. I don't know how they got here, but anyways. So, knight f3 had been played. Bishop 2, bishop 2, g4. And um, I think we got two very good reasons why bishop 2, g4 is considered a blunder. So there are two main ideas here. Uh, and I think black is getting in serious trouble now. Uh, they could have played, for instance, they could have played now, bishop takes on f7, which checks the king. And as soon as the king takes the bishop, you actually play then knight to e5, checking the king and attacking the bishop twice with the queen and with the knight implicitly. Then the king must go back to or g8, and then you take the bishop, knight takes, queen takes, thank you very much, looks very good. And the most devastating move would be knight to e5. And if you say, wait a second, we're just sacking the queen? Yes, we do, because if the bishop were to capture the queen after we play knight e5, actually, we do bishop to f7 checkmate, because the knight on e5 covers the d7, defends the bishop, and the poor black king can't move anywhere, being, you know, smothered, suffocated by its own pieces. So that would have been the best reply. But hey, Francisco didn't see it, didn't play it, but instead he chose to do h3. Ah, well, you know, more, more, more tamed, you know, more mild continuation here. So they missed a big opportunity. Now, happily for him, bishop took on f3, Queen took back on f3 now, and you can already see how the queen attacks on b7. So this is a problem for, for, for black to think about. And probably the best reply here would have been simply c6, stopping the queen. You don't want to get the queen on b7, attacking, taking your pawn, attacking then the rook. You don't want to do that. 
Right. Well, he didn't defend on b7. He didn't defend it. His opponent, uh, Narciso, didn't, def didn't defend the b7, but instead he chose to play e6, which in itself seems to be kind of generous because the bishop now comes out in the game. Uh, it's a pity it didn't, but it should have. Okay, so now queen takes. Queen takes on b7. Rook under attack, so they've got a problem. They play knight e7 very nicely now. The rook is being defended by the queen. We can't take the rook. Uh, we gotta do something else. Yeah, uh, I think they might play probably bishop b5, but knight b5 is also a gorgeous move, which I think it had been played at some point. Yes, right now, knight to b5, uh, double attack on c7, and then a check would be uh, happening. So black has responded here with rook to c8, defending twice, not allowing the white knight to take on c7 and check the king. Now, the knight takes on a7, attacking the rook. Um, I don't know why, but Narciso plays something like uh, knight to b6, uh, rather than, uh, you know, just uh, attacking the queen or playing a bishop or something, but instead, I don't know why, uh, they played knight to b6. Probably they didn't know the value of the pieces or something. I don't know what happened. Obviously, rook is 5, knight is 3. You don't want to give that rook. You totally don't want to lose that rook. So knight takes, knight takes. And uh, white now plays d4. Probably they want to bring the bishop to the party, which is very good. Bishop f4, bishop g5. These are very active, good move for white to play. Uh, finally, finally, black plays something with tempo. Queen is attacked, but there is a bit of a problem here. Is this check here that, you know, might happen at any time. Uh, probably queen c6 would be the most direct approach here. Uh, well, okay, bishop b5, knight takes, queen takes, check. Knight blocks, you know, knight blocks the check, fine. Uh, now, I don't know why white pushed the pawn. They should have just simply castled, getting the rook activated, or, you know, or just get the bishop. They should have played the bishop, being very actively, and that would have been much, much, much better. Okay, so they pushed the pawn. It's a funky move they played. Uh, okay, pawn takes back, bishop e3, uh, black played finally, uh, bishop to d6. Uh, white now played rook over to d1. Much better would have been for white here simply to do castle on the queen side. I don't know if in 1475, castle on the queen side, the king side were in place. Uh, because, I mean, it, it's very natural here to want to castle on the queen side and you get the rook active anyway. I don't know, they play just rook over to d1. Maybe they wanted to castle on the king side. It's not very uh, obvious. Anyway, queen to f6. And now Francisco uh, captured the pawn. White plays queen to g6. And you could already see there is an attack on g2. And... Um, Francisco plays bishop to f4. It's a sort of a tactic. It's a wishful thinking, hoping that black would take on f4, which they did. But if they didn't, what if black, for instance, replies here, queen to e4, checking the king and attacking the bishop? What if black would have played, uh, you know, taken on g2? So there might be, you know, another twist to the... Um, current of evolution on the board here. They didn't play none of these two moves, but instead they did take the bishop. So, you know, uh, white was successful here, and now checkmate is coming. Check first, king must retreat to f8, and the uh, Francesco de Castelvi delivers the checkmate to Narciso, who loses the game. Uh, after this move, we got a checkmate. So, boys and girls, this is the oldest recorded game of chess with today's rules of chess. So, before someone says that I'm a Eurocentrist or Europocentrist, I don't know what's the term, just wanted to tell you that's the oldest recorded game uh, in abidance with today's rules of chess. Okay, boys and girls, uh, thanks for watching it. Uh, have another look at this game if you prefer and I'll see you guys very shortly with more videos uh, of this beautiful, beautiful game we all love. Thank you.